Professor, recently it was seen that real estate rents have surged up a lot and there's been this steep rental hike in a lot of urban cities, not just in Mumbai, but even cities across the country. And I think that's where this whole idea of rent control comes up, right? Which is a regulatory measure which sets a price ceiling to the amount of uh, rent that landlords can charge their tenants. Right. So today we have Professor Meghna Ghosh who's going to be addressing the issue of rent control uh, in the Indian market, especially in urban cities like Mumbai. So, Professor, how do you think rent control is beneficial to tenants in the city? Okay, uh, so let me just talk about rent control a bit before I start with that. So, rent control, as you must be already aware, is a highly populist measure by any local government, right? And Mumbai is one of the cities which succumbed to this temptation mm -hmm. and introduced the Bombay Rent Control Act. So, essentially this act was implemented so that people who can't afford to live in a city, so like Bombay, which is so expensive, uh, can afford to get a decent house and all that. So later it was extended as the Maharashtra Rent Control Act as well. And the reason being that Bombay is an island city, Bombay or Mumbai is an island city, and uh, there's a huge purge of population coming in every day, every hour for jobs, for education and all other purposes. Mom Bombay cannot afford to accommodate so many people at, uh, you know, in, because it's crunch of space and everything. So the act was introduced so that people like these, they get to stay in reasonably good houses at lower mm -hmm. rents than the market, right? That was the whole purpose of this Rent Control Act. And uh, initially when the people were coming in, so demand was very huge and there was not a lot of supply. And you have learned in your economics class as well that if there is more demand and less supply, the situation is excess demand. And as a result, prices shoot up. So rent was also shooting up. So to prevent that, this act at that moment was very much needed. Right? And uh, as I said, the purpose, whole purpose was to ensure affordable housing. So on the face of it, it was the objective was actually good. Mm -hmm. So an essential also for a city like uh, Bombay or a city like New York right. in the US. So that was the uh, crunch of it. Yeah. Apart from this, do you see any potential consequences of this act? So good consequences, yes, for the people, for the tenants, mm -hmm. because there are multiple advantages they can get out of it. First is they have a stable uh, place where they can live because they are not in the fear of constant eviction fear or uh, rising prices, rising rents, which uh, rents which hike, you know, unexpectedly all the time. So they are safeguarded from this particular policy and, ten and the owners cannot evict them at their own will. There is a limit to that eviction as well. Plus, they can plan their finances a lot better. Uh, owners cannot hike their rents annually uh, unlimited in unlimited amount. So there is a fixed rate by which an owner can you know hike the rent annually. So all these things are uh, advantages which the owner uh, is not getting, but the tenant is can actually you know avail. But from the side of the owner, there are a lot of disadvantages as well. Right. Um, how do you think this policy balances the rights of landlords and tenants, especially when it comes to quality of housing, which is really important, right, especially in a city like Mumbai? Yeah, that's a good question. As I said, for the owner, it's not a good policy in the mm -hmm. sense because owners not have any incentive to invest in the house anymore. Mm -hmm. They're getting a fixed rent from a house. The, uh, the annual hike is also too less for their uh, own good, which is why they don't invest too much in, you know, the, in improving the quality or maintaining their houses so much, which is why we are looking forward to the uh, rents or interest of the tenants, but the interest of the owners are compromised a bit. Mm. As a result, the balance is a little, you know, shaken off because of this. Yeah. Uh, so, ma'am, do you think this policy should actually continue and how is it effective overall to the urban society? Okay. Uh, let's talk about the owners first again. So, because the owners do not have any incentive, as I said, of investing in new housing or repair of the old houses, maintaining the old houses as well. So, there is a dearth of new housing, right? Investment in new houses is falling. Uh, from the government side, the uh, you know the revenue from new pro revenue from all these properties that's also falling. Mm -hmm. That's one side. Also, uh, from the tenant side now. The people who are actually gaining from this gaining from this act should be the ones who are the low income households. Okay. But because of lobbying and because of the power these uh, urban uh, rich households hold, so they use their own power to you know uh, gain particular you know advantage over these people, and they are able to secure the low income houses actually are not the ones who actually need it. So as a result, even in Bombay, you will see the poor, the lower middle class people, the only places they get to live actually are the slums. Right. So increasing slums is uh, one of the uh, consequences. Also, 
in Bombay recently, there has been an increase in the leave and license agreement due to this uh, Rent Control Act. All these agreements are 11th month agreements and it helps the owners to bypass the Rent Control Act. Mm -hmm. Why? Because the rent control, for the Rent Control Act to be effective, you need to be in the particular uh, house for at least 12 months and if you are not, then you are not eligible for this. So by this they are able to uh, you know, bypass this and the tenants have to be evicted, uh, I mean they are evicted from their houses in less than a year. The intentions of uh, this Rent Control Act was also to promote socio-economic diversity. People from diverse backgrounds uh, who are earning a low income, they come together and they live in, this, uh, loca in these localities. And the Rent Control Act actually helps in this because, as you said, eviction is not very easy when this act is there. And you cannot, there cannot be mass you know, displacement of these people uh, because of this particular act. So it actually helps in that area. But overall speaking, maybe the whole purpose of this is somewhere lost. Mm. But still, it's, I mean, there is a lot of thought that needs to be going and how to implement it in a much better way than what it is right now. Correct. I think it just shows us how many other factors have to be taken yeah. into consideration apart from just economics in its pure sense. Yeah. Uh, I have a question for you though. So, uh, because you have been studying this subject for the semester, right? So, why do you think that we are learning all these concepts, one of them being rent control, which you discussed right today? Mm -hmm. So, why do you think we are studying these? Because you are a law student. So, how do you think these concepts or this subject as a whole is going to help you in future? Well, ma'am, I think as law students, we play multiple roles in society, whether mm -hmm. that be of researchers, advocates, and even potential policy makers. And I think understanding these key concepts of economics is very important because there's so many places where economics and law, they intersect. For example, rental control, where there's so many legal implications involved. It's mm -hmm. not just analyzing things through a very economic or monetary perspective. And not only does this help us thrive in our professional careers, but I think it's essential when it comes to upholding social, certain concepts of uh, social justice and uh, ethical standards. And I think this really aligns well with Bits Law School's transdisciplinary approach to legal education.